My videos in the biodiversity playlist generally convey some important lesson concerning the evolutionary history of a group, whether in early mammals, hominins, fish, or whales. However, in this case, I just want to do a video on elephants. They're my favorite mammals, and I think they deserve their own video. Before we get to elephant evolution, we'll look at what creationists have to say about them. Answers in Genesis author Karen Viette wrote a 2017 article titled Elephant, the Giant with Specialized Tools which I agree with for the most part. Everything except for the last two paragraphs is fine, just an explanation of how wonderful elephants are. But when the article decides to tackle paleontology, Viet flops immediately. She says, quote, Despite the lack of transitional forms, many evolutionists believe the elephant's closest living relatives are the furry little hyrax and the aquatic manatee, close quote. So why do biologists think elephants are related to hyraxes and manatees? The answer comes from the one place that incinerates all baromenological arguments, genetics. I find it humorous that creationists speak so highly of genetics, always talking about the nebulous genetic information and, more recently, genetic entropy, which no geneticist aside from the founder of the idea takes seriously. Yet when creationists have the ability to use genetics, they avoid it like the plague. Here's just one example. Anyway, elephants are members of the mammalian superorder Aphrotheria, which includes elephants, hyraxes, manatees, elephant shrews, tenrex, and golden moles. Truly, there are currently no fossils linking the ancestors of elephants to the ancestors of hyraxes. But there are elephant fossils linking them to manatees. We'll get back to them. As for hyraxes, elephant shrews, tenrex, and golden moles, they are linked to elephants by genetics even though there are fossils of hyraxes, such as the late Eocene Demaetherium. We also see that all these guys are related by biogeography, showing again that biogeography confirms phylogeny. Now, what about those elephant fossils being linked to manatee fossils? Elephants and manatees are the only living members of the clade Tethytheria, named for its members living around the ancient Tethys Sea, which previously included the orders Embrithopoda and Desmostylia. The most well-known of the embrithopods is the rhino-like Arsinoetherium, and Desmostylia is a group of hippo-like mammals, such as Paleoparadoxia. And, manatees are descended from lumbering terrestrial herbivores, such as Pezosiren. That's why manatees have fingernails, even though they don't need them. The other impressively ignorant thing Viet says is, quote, They have not dug up evidence to use for showing the supposed evolution of the trunk, let alone many other unique features of the elephant." Close quote. Really? Even a cursory glance at elephant fossils would tell you that's not true. Elephants vary hugely morphologically. However, determining elephant phylogenies has been exceptionally difficult. The oldest elephants hail from the Paleocene, including Erytherium and Phosphotherium. By the Eocene, Numidotherium, Merytherium, and Berytherium appeared, and what we see is that all early proboscideans were semi-aquatic, probably utilizing their early tiny trunks for underwater feeding. They transitioned more towards fully terrestrial lifestyles as the Eocene wore on, appearing in such forms as Phyomia and Paleomastodon. Some authors have suggested that Berytherium might be the ancestor of the odd, backward-tusked elephants known as Dinotheres. Dinotheres persisted from the late Oligocene to the Plasticene, and researchers hypothesized that they might have been killed off by climate change. Also, during the late Oligocene, a species of elephant named Eritrium appeared, displaying horizontal tooth displacement. Since elephants lack permanent premolars, they continually add teeth horizontally, and since Eritrium had this, researchers posit that it may be an ancestor to modern elephants, as well as gomphotheres and mastodons in the 2006 paper, A Proboscidean from the Late Oligocene of Eritrea, a missing link between early elephantiforms and elephantomorpha, and biogeographic implications. Among the elephantomorphs, researchers have used the hyoid bone, 
which is a horseshoe-shaped bone in the neck, to determine phylogeny. This method places mastodons at the base of the tree. And this has been corroborated by paleogenomic evidence, indicating that the mastodon is only distantly related to modern elephants and mammoths, such as the 2010 paper, Genomic DNA Sequences from Mastodon and Woolly Mammoth Reveal Deep Speciation of Forest and Savannah Elephants. Mastodons appeared in the late Oligocene, about 28.4 million years ago, and went extinct around 11,000 years ago. Next, Gomphotheres first appeared around 20 million years ago, and went extinct around 6,000 years ago. This was an impressively diverse group of proboscideans ranging from the group's namesake, Gomphotherium, to the South American elephant Cuvieronius, named after French anatomist Georges Cuvier, see Common Ancestry. Most Gomphotheres sported four, as opposed to the normal two, tusks, and some had highly elongated lower jaws, such as Nathabelodon. Archaeologists have even discovered evidence that the Clovis people, early North American hunter-gatherers, hunted Gomphotherium. Then, the family Stegodontidae also appeared around 20 million years ago, and the Stegodontids went extinct around 4,100 years ago. Some of these were huge elephants, but others were affected by insular dwarfism, the result of populating islands in Indonesia. Regardless, these elephants must have been a sight to behold, and what misfortune we have living in a time with so few elephant species. According to the 2016 paper in Age for Kajong, a Miocene fossil site east of Lake Turkana, Kenya, three different elephant genera inhabited the same area of Africa during the Miocene. Archaeobelodon, Prodinotherium, and Gomphotherium all lived in northeastern Kenya around 19.2 million years ago. Can you imagine seeing three different genera of elephants, each armed with a different array of tusks, grazing on the African savanna? Now we've reached one genera of living elephants, Loxodonta. Loxodonta africana is the African elephant and was previously considered to be the only African elephant. As it happens, genetics has revealed that the African forest elephant, Loxodonta cyclotus, is a different species. But it gets worse. L. cyclotus is descended from a different genus of elephant than L. africana. L. africana is descended from another species of Loxodonta, specifically L. atlantica, which is in turn descended from L. exoptata. L. cyclotus, on the other hand, is more closely related to the straight-tusked elephant Paleoloxodon antiquus, as indicated by the 2017 paper, Paleogenomes of Eurasian Straight-Tusked Elephants Challenge the Current View of Elephant Evolution. As such, L. africana is the least derived elephantid, followed by P. antiquus. The tree then splits into the genus Elephas, of which the only living member is the Indian elephant, E. maximus, and mammoths, classified as the genus Mammothus. Both Elephas and Mammothus first appeared in the Pliocene, with mammoths dying off around 3,700 years ago. Mammoths are especially interesting because paleogenomic research has allowed biologists to determine who their closest relatives are. It has also shown researchers that the population of Eurasian woolly mammoths, Mammothus primigenius, split between 1 and 2 million years ago, some of which moved to North America. M. trogantheri, on the other hand, moved to North America around 1.5 million years ago. In North America, M. columbi, descended from M. trogantheri, and occasionally interbred with M. primigenius, producing M. jeffersoni. M. jeffersoni is named for America's third president, Thomas Jefferson, who moonlighted as a paleontologist. Well, that's elephant evolution in a nutshell. Elephants are descended from semi-aquatic mammals with small trunks but became large terrestrial herbivores over time. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.